Hello, everyone. I hope you had an amazing weekend, a uh, three-day weekend, and you are rested up and ready to learn. Today, we are going to get started in our deep dive into different genres. Before we do that, I want to give you a little life hack that I've learned over the years in remembering the difference between fiction and nonfiction. I don't know about you, but um, sometimes kids get tripped up on this. So I have learned that the secret is in the letter F. F is for fiction. It's also for the word fake and whoops. And it's also for the word false. Fiction, false and fake. I'll start with the letter F. And then of course, nonfiction. Nonfiction also means not fake, not false. Of course, informational text and nonfiction are always real information. Um, so again, the secret is in the F. I hope that is helpful to you. I want to show you this little poster. Uh, usually it's up here, but I wanted to showcase it today because we're getting started on informational text. So I'm going to read this to you. Convert curiosity into knowledge. Knowledge is something you gain in informational text. Informational text, discover the dazzling world around you. Discover is a key word here. When the reader is reading informational text, they learn things, they discover things, they find out. And an author always writes informational text with the purpose of informing you, the reader, and me, the reader, of, of the topic that they're writing about. It says, beyond just books. It's magazines, brochures, online articles, reports, and more. Lots of people are reading the news and getting their information online now, aren't they? Uh, starring factual information. Always get facts from informational text. New vocabulary, usually related to the topic. Instructive graphics. Instructive meaning we are taught, we are instructed, and graphics are things that we can see and learn more from, like maps and, um, sorry, <laughs> like maps and real photographs and graphs, all things that we can, that the author uses to support what they're trying to teach. Uh, of course, it says, with timeless language, multiple formats, and orderly content, we're going to study also the order that an author organizes their text. So, what informational texts do you think you're going to read? Think about some topics that you'd like to find out about or topics that really interest you. And let's get started on that. I'm going to share my screen with you while we look into our new textbook. This is our Savas textbook. Not to worry, it's pretty interesting. I think you'll like it. So when you first log into Savas, it might ask you some questions like, do you give permission for Savas to connect to your Google Classroom? If they ask you that question, the answer is yes. So make sure that you accept or approve or allow information, uh, allow permission for Savas and your Google Classroom to connect. That way you don't have to remember a new username and password. Um, you'll notice two assignments in your classroom today with Savas. The first one will bring you here. Um, if they ask you for a username and password, by the way, they just want your Google, the, your Google username and password. So you're going to come over here. Whenever you see this sign right here, it's telling you that it can read it out loud to you. So you are always 
encouraged and permitted to press those buttons if you want it to be read out loud. The question, of course, is how do journeys change us? After you think about that, go ahead and press play here on this video and watch this short little clip about some people long ago who journeyed to America. Below that, you're going to come to this turn and talk. Now, um, unfortunately, we're not together where we can turn and talk to each other live, but we will be soon, not to worry. For now, I want you to go ahead and answer this question. What does the word journeys mean to you? It doesn't have to be long, but I'd prefer three to four sentences, and please remember proper punctuation. Whenever you come to this sign right here, notebook, you can open it up and you can answer it directly in here. Once you hit close, the answer that you wrote will come straight to me. Nothing else to do. Um, when you get to these, this survey, just be honest. I'm not grading this or, and I'm not going to judge you. I just want to know. So reading workshop. I know about different types of informational text and understand their structures and features. If you are thinking, absolutely, this is just a review for me, hit a five. If you don't know what in the world I just said, that would be one. And then you can rate anywhere in between one to five. So I can use language to make connections between reading and writing. If you feel really comfortable with that, that would be a five and you can rate from one to five and then so on and so forth with these two. You're going to scroll down here to academic vocabulary today. The words are insight, wandered, passage, adventure, and curious. Go ahead and read these directions and remember that you can click on this little button right here anytime you want it read out loud to you. And your assignment today will be to find a synonym for each of these vocabulary words. You'll click right here in this space and you'll write the synonym right in there. You are going to do awesome. Do not worry. I know you can do it. The other activity that you're going to do through Savas today is a little bit more about informational text. So this is your other um, assignment that's in Google Classroom right now. Informational text gives factual information, giving facts about a topic. It includes a main idea or in fifth grade we say the word central idea or the most important ideas about the topic. A main idea and details. It also has text features, and this is what I want you to pay attention to, such as the title of the story of the article, headings and subheadings, bold words, images. You remember that other word I taught you? Graphics. Anything you can see that helps support the author's message, and other clues to the main idea. Now, Describe a nonfiction text that you read recently. It can be from Epic or it can be any magazine that you've picked up. It can be really anything. And you'll use the anchor chart below to tell whether the text you read is an informational text. Then take notes on your class discussion. So here is your anchor chart. An author's purpose in writing informational text is always to give information about a topic or explain a concept. Elements or features in informational text include a main idea, which is the topic's most important idea. Details support or tell more about the main ideas. Text features offer clues to main ideas. Text features like graphics, maps, real photos, etc. The structure is how the author organizes the information. Maybe it's cause and effect. Maybe it's comparing, contrasting two ideas. Maybe it is offering up a problem and then offering a solution for it. Or chronological, 
or time order. The other word I want you to know is sequential order. That all means the same thing. We'll go over this all, all of these text structures, more in depth later this week. But for this assignment, the only thing that I want you to do is write here in the notebook what you've read recently and tell me if you think it's nonfiction, specifically informational text, and how you know. What text features helped you to know that it was informational or not? That's all I have for you today, other than one more. I want to review with you a sentence. A sentence require, oh, there's my keyboard. A sentence requires two things, a subject and a verb. So tomorrow we'll go further into depth with that as well, but a subject has to be a noun, which of course is a person, place, thing, or idea. An S for subject is a noun. Instead of marker, I'm going to actually screen share. So be patient with me while I pull that back up again. Okay. Let's clear this all off. A sentence needs a subject, which is always at least one noun, like I. The predicate needs a verb, which could be jump, I jump. That is as simple as a sentence can possibly be. It needs a subject and a predicate. All sentences that are simple sentences can be divided into that. So that's just a little intro. You do not have an assignment with, with, with sentences yet today, but you will later this week. And now for real, that's all I have for you. I hope you guys had a spectacular weekend again, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.